Hello everyone, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program of Realism Overhaul. When we last left our O'Neill cylinder, it wasn't doing so well. We weren't able to connect things together, and nothing that I've tried to do has solved this problem yet. And maybe that's because I just need to relaunch the pieces, or maybe it's doomed. Um, I don't know. Uh, it, it should work in theory. It's very theoretical. We take a look at Unity, you know, uh, there is this docking node here. It, it, it's supposed to let things dock to it on, this, on that side, you know. Maybe this rotation is a problem. I wonder how to get it without that rotation. Taking a look at my pass-through docking port, which I base everything on because it's a docking port that I know works. It's much smaller, obviously. It's got a little docking port there, but somehow this one doesn't have a rotation. So, maybe that's an issue. Anyway, uh, all attempts to make these things stick together has not worked out for me. So, I think I'm gonna eliminate these and try to start over and see if that helps. But it might not. Maybe I should launch the tube first and then see if that all docks together. But I was not satisfied with the way our tugs performed. Maybe for this first one I'll just put the RCS on the modules. So this was not supposed to be the plan, adding RCS to the modules like this, but... It'll save us some time. But ultimately it would lead to too high a part count, so we'll use tugs later. I swear I'll get a Kerbal to blow these up, these tanks up, maybe even the RCS ports up after things are together. Otherwise we'll have too high a part count. But for now, they're a matter of convenience. Well, now it's Waterfall. There we go. What's happening? Whoa. Don't tell me Waterfall made it wobblier. That was definitely wobblier. And it's not making the sound. <laughs> It's given up on making sound for these engines. Great. Okay. Okay. It will be deorbited. Right. Well, now we have this packed. We do have a piece of trash here. Please dock. Mm, they're not docking together. <laughs> Gosh darn it. So this is my problem right now. Why aren't they docking together? We'll try to use the big old pass-through docking ports then. I should have just made these pass-through tubes in the first place. Right, so. Do I have the different pass-through docking ports, the big ones? Are oh, they the right kind of big? Well, that's not as big as I thought it would be. I guess it is bigger than these. Still pretty small though. Should I assume that I can clip them in a bit or not? These seem like they could be smaller. I really was thinking I would be using bigger ones of those. The fact that they're floating isn't great either. But can I really make them flush to it and expect them to still dock together? That I do not know. I should have just put tweak scale on them. Well, this is just a test. 
I'll refine this variant some other time. Let's just see if we can get things docked together at all. Try to be careful to make sure the docking node still sticks out. I don't want big ports, I want the right ports. I want the right shape. Exactly the right size. Not sort of fitting. Okay, well, we'll try. Let's go. Sound issue won't have changed, I don't think. We get the ignition sound, but not the full thrust sound. Ooh, wobbles. Maybe a little bit too early there. It's possible a waterfall has not encountered this situation before. It's a special sort of thing. I don't usually make 80 chambered engines. Probably gonna need another circularization burn since I don't want to pitch down here. And now weird random sound. Apparently that's supposed to be RCS, but I'm not sure what it's trying to do there. So something about waterfalls weird, that's for sure. It sure makes this sound just fine. Okay, in orbit. Please let it at least connect. It's very displeasing that they're not going to be fitting exactly right, but... Okay. Alright. Carried a lot more of the MH and Mon3 than I needed with the RCS setup like this. Why do the pass-through docking ports work, but the docking ports that are based on the pass-through docking ports not work? Oh, these all have to have docking ports too. I better just fix those. Maybe we'll have to get a Kerbal to slap docking ports on? I forgot those all need them too. Maybe they actually work though. Hope springs eternal. Okay, well. We do have this little bit of trash. I should have just put some RCS ports, a controller, and some tanks to deorbit that, but. At least it seems solid. <laughs> Remember, this has got to be part of a very large station. We really, really don't want it wiggling. So now we launched a base plate to it. Oh, one of them got overheated. I don't see any opportunity to avoid going through the speed of sound at this point. Okay, maybe it'll work this time. Oh, it ended too soon. Misstated our Delta V. Lies! 
Well, hopefully the RCS can save us this time. Maybe the RCS is taking the main engine sound off of the station carrier somehow. That's another thing. Waterfall probably doesn't expect the same item to have RCS as well as an engine. No, well, good thing the core tube has a whole lot of RCS on it right now. Because it's going to have to do the rest of the work. Well, at least that's orbit. I want to give it some buffer though. I don't want the rendezvousing vessel to accidentally have to dip into the atmosphere in order to get to it. Okay, okay, that's good enough. 180 by 160. Right. Let's go to this core tube set and do the rest. I mean, yeah, we'll just stay in the high orbit and let it catch up to us. Does this really have 145 meters per second of delta V just for the inclination correction? That is a good question. It is currently 151 tons. And I think half of that is the MHM on 3. I really put way too much. I really put way too much. So I think it does, in fact, have more than enough delta V. Gotta hate how much time it takes, though. Hmm, it's a toss-up whether this has the worst at RCS or whether the station carrier does. Relative to their masses, of course. I should have left better time warp in here, <laughs> just for this situation. I will only correct half of it now because we're getting further and further away from the actual node. Okay, well, I guess I'll take that. At least it's in the range. Okay, that's what we need to dock with. Now you just kill rotation and make sure to retract those engines. Okay. Oh, it's all spinning. Gosh. You were supposed to kill rotation too. <laughs> Time warp changes things dramatically. Uh, uh. <laughs> Can't even time warp right now. Of any kind. Guess wait till 200 meters. Nope, that's still good. Not good. Okay, don't do that. What is the range that we can fizz warp in? Not there. <laughs> this is dangerous. It is fizz warp we're talking about here. Well, that closest approach distance is clearly wrong. Okay. All right. Couple. Well, let's uh, extend this. And... Mm, I wanted to rename. Well, that's the start. Now this little fellow... Oh, we're pretty close to... 
gosh, that sound. Pretty close to apoapsis. There's not much periapsis to deal with. Now, if you had enough parachutes to deal with a vessel mass of 2,200 tons, you'd be in business. <laughs> no problems. Okay. The orbiting has been demonstrated. I'll just get rid of it in the tracking station. I'll have to do other cleanup as well. But all right. We've started construction. Because of the pass-through docking ports, though, there might be a little bit of inaccuracy in the construction, which is troublesome. And also the plate tubes currently don't have docking ports at all. Uh, or they have the docking ports that they're supposed to have had built in, but those don't seem to work. So we're going to have to have a Kerbal place some docking ports on those, maybe? Anyway, that's the situation. So with that, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.